Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen. Star Citizen Alpha 3.8.1 is now out to live and it comes with the Lunar Festival New Year mini event. Some ships are on sale like the Carrack and the 890 Jump. The Cutlass Red is also on sale but also flyable in 3.8.1. So we also have for sale, uh, or I say as well, we have the M50 from $100, the Cutlass Red from $120, the Carrack from $500 and the 890 jump from $950. Some very expensive ships there. Uh, a lot of that stuff, in fact, almost all of it, uh, I would suggest you get in game. I say almost all of it because I already own a Carrack and I think I'd be a hypocrite to tell people not to buy one when I already own one, but don't buy one. You will be able to earn all of those ships in game. The 890 jump is limited to a certain amount of hulls before it is sold out again. I know a lot of people will probably be grabbing a CCU upgrade to the Carrack or Cutlass Red. There are also various ship packs available with cutlasses or other groups of Drake ships too. So what's new in 3.8.1? Well, the Cutlass Red brings with it med bay gameplay. Medical beds can now be used for healing and respawn after death. Initial game login is still set by the menu selection if it's the first login and then by whatever last major landing zone you you landed at but once you've logged in you can go to a medical bed in the cutlass red or the 890 jump or eventually on the carrack and then lie down on that bed and then set as preferred icu intensive care unit you will then spawn there for the remainder of your session assuming that ship is available you can clear your icu by lying down in a bed and clearing it or set it in a different bed as well and they have to be medical beds you can also lie down in a medical bed and heal all your injuries as well which is very useful upon death the player will respawn at the desired medical bed if they died less than four million meters away currently this functionality is only available on ships with medical beds so ain't no jump and cutlass red for the moment the ship has to be in game as well it can't be destroyed or despawned if the ship is not available players will instead respawn at their default location so at a landing zone i would treat the current med bed gameplay as a short-term solution for respawning in game and in the verse and it as a temporary spawn point so bear that in mind they are going to have quite a lot more in-depth gameplay when it comes to the medical gameplay and i suspect there's going to be things like um, a, a fee attached to spawning at these icus and potentially timers and maybe only a certain amount of people can spawn there and things like that so they are going to um, evolve that gameplay quite significantly. I suspect it's quite exploitable at the moment and obviously you can zerg out of a bed um, if someone's boarding your ship at the moment but th th it's very first iteration, it's useful in the verse at the moment, really great if you want to run an event like the Daymar Rally or or want to do something like Rexilla does with 25v25 on a server fighting each other. The Cutlass Red um, has positioned itself for search and rescue and ambulance type gameplay but in the short term it allows you to have that mobile spawn point in the verse which is really useful it is both useful now and going to be useful in the future as a support ship probably one of the best support ships in the game there is still scu room for the rear airlock too, 12 scu so the ship is sort of sectioned off and uh, more securely so you have a rear airlock by the ramp so that you can have the area with the med beds in pretty pretty secure though there's not going to be room for like fitting a vehicle inside the ship anymore because of that the ship has two med beds four bunk beds a nav e7 echo scanner which in the future will give you long range radar capabilities and better detection for like search and rescue beacons and finding uh, people and distress signals and things like that it has four size three weapon mounts it was confirmed that the ship only has one shield rather than two though and there was a uh, previously a uh, an error with that again in the future once we have tractor beams the ship is going to have a rear mounted tractor beam to assist you with res uh, rescue and recovery missions as part of the Lunar Festival, though, uh, in 3.8.1 that they've added to the game in the short term, there are red envelopes hidden around the major sort of hubs and landing zones around the verse. You can hunt them down and then sell them at kiosks to ensure good fortune. Basically, they're worth a good amount of UEC each. It could be your lucky day if you find them. And I have found them sort of like typically in plant and bush areas around Port Olisa, you can find them in sort of like uh, the little plant boxes, uh, window boxes, things. The 3.8.1 live build did wipe progress, so um, your Alpha UBC progress is gone with this patch. 
there is no indication yet as well if the next live patch will have a wipe or not. There was some other additions and changes I want to highlight with the 3.8.1 live build. They did fix and prevent various exploits for unfair alpha UBC generation. There's an accidental fire threshold for party members. Various missions have received tweaks. They've added an option to disable film grain. You can just turn it off now in the, the options. Turn film grain off. Uh, they've added target nearest friendly function. They've added auto zooming uh, on selected target. The default is off, but it's a subtle zoom on a target when the weapon prediction points, the aiming point and the look direction all align. Security patrol quantum travel interdiction will no longer occur for lawful players, but will still occur for players in normal transit. They toned down some of the lens flare effects and tweaked some of the other lighting and effects in the verse. There are now entrance light rings to indicate where a player should stand to get into sort of like uh, ships like the Mole and other appropriate ships from underneath to activate their elevators to come and get you. There is now a cooldown on player bounties of the same player. Rented ships in the Persistent Universe can no longer be modified. This is actually quite a big change and currently nerfs certain ships quite badly that you would potentially want to rent, like the Prospector, because that means you can't use different mining heads. It's partly to prevent players at the moment moving off items from rented ships, but it's uncertain whether CIG are gonna add a rental customization system. So you can go, well, I'm okay with not customizing my rental ship because you wouldn't be able to customize a rental car after you'd got it, but I would like to customize my rented ship before I purchase it, or before I rent it. So if I can have some customization options, that changes the rent price and then rent it. So a prospector with all the different heads on it, bam, great. I, I like that idea for the future. There were loads of bugs and crash fixes for the 3.8 branch, though there are still some major bugs that are still plaguing this 3.8.1 build. Prime Astro services might not work properly at stations and ports when you're landed, so you have to hover above the pad and request those services just, just above it without landing. Sometimes repairs are unavailable at stations and the repair fails if you select repair and refuel simultaneously, so select those services individually. Objects can fall through the floor when dropped sometimes, which is really annoying. An extra static train can appear at Lawville and prevent the use of trains at, at that area. And sometimes at certain stations, elevators don't work. For both of those problems, you might have to re-log to solve them. The caterpillar can roll over on some moons and planets, which is not ideal if you're doing any form of trading. Uh, rentals and or rental timers may not work when renting a second ship which is obviously a problem. If the quantum travel market is at the edge of a planet or moon when you're trying to quantum travel, you can hit the planetary object and explode. AI ships can sometimes get stuck in the middle of their motion. Some other things that I noticed they fix, they fix collisions on various ships, planets and structures, so you shouldn't fall through as many things. Some issues with rental ships were fixed. Uh, players should get their appropriate starting alpha UEC based on what's uh, appropriate to their account. Various fixes to mining and mining ships were made. Missions should now track objectives and times correctly. FPS weapons now fire consistently and don't disappear randomly. Thank you. MFD and HUDs are now correct uh, with their scales and displayed values. Also, when you update the game, delete the shader folder from your Star Citizen user folder to avoid issues. You don't have to delete the whole user folder. That will get rid of all your key bindings. You just want to get rid of that shader folder um, just, just the once, once you, anytime you upgrade the game, basically anytime you update it. Uh, there was a huge roadmap change with lots of movement and Crytek have put in their final response to their own motion to dismiss, which I will cover in another video or videos over the next few days. There's actually quite a lot going on with uh, roadmaps and other news as well. But what do you think? Are you going to be playing 3.8.1? Were there issues or bugs that have now been addressed and you're like, yes, my bug has been addressed? Or are you still waiting on fixes before you play? And what do you think of the 3.8.1 build? Do you think it was pushed too early? Are you considering getting a Cutlass Red or do you already own one? Whatever your thoughts, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Every month we have a ship giveaway for January 2020. It's for an Anvil Arrow and Star Citizen game package. Just comment on any of my videos made this month to be in for a chance. Um, more details in the description below. Oh, it's time to shill. If you're looking for a VPN, then consider NordVPN. They have many advantages over free VPNs, but are incredibly cheap and I use them and can recommend. There's Shadow as well, which is an alternative to owning your own gaming PC. They give you a 
sort of Windows 10 environment focused on gaming and it leverages the power of your instets and their cloud so that you can stream it to any device or other PC or laptop or phone or whatever. And you can now order systems with the varying scales of hardware for up to 4K gaming. And as always, it works fantastically well with Star Citizen. It's an extremely affordable way to get access to a high spec PC. Links below to Shadow and Nord, and make sure you use the code BoardGamer to get a discount. Thank you very much for watching, and if you want to support my channel further, consider becoming a Patreon or YouTube member via the join button, or sharing my videos, or liking and subscribing. Take care, and I'll see you in the verse.